The Weekly is supported by the Oregon State University eCampus. Do you want to take the fast track to your career in computing? You can earn your computer science degree 100% online from Oregon State and tap into unlimited career opportunities in any field. Learn more at ecampus.oregonstate.edu slash now. Test. Test. Give me a, give me a level. 1-1. One, 2-2. One, two, Three, three. Ah, 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 ah. Let me show you how much I counted. <laughs> We've got one pizza slice, <laughs> two pizza slices, one screen, yes. <laughs> two screens. We only have two microphones. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Weekly, recorded on February 27th here in Barcelona, Spain, as the entire team is here for MWC 2019. All right, so I wanted to start moving the podcast to a more focused format. And thank you, by the way, for all of your feedback on it uh, over the last couple of episodes. We have gone ahead and done that with this episode, where we also have a special guest in Nicole Scott of Mobile Geeks. So basically what I did was I wanted everybody to think of their one favorite thing from Mobile World Congress this year. Instead of going through so many different topics and talking about so many things all at once, I wanted everyone to pick the one thing they truly liked. And that's exactly what we're talking about in this episode. I'm not going to spoil anything, but we do have Nicole Scott of Mobile Geeks as our special guest. I interview her in the first half of this podcast. And then in the last half of the podcast, we have myself, Adam from XDA, and of course, Jaime de Veda. And the three of us talk about our favorite things at MWC. Uh, cheers. A chi tears. A chi. Tea cheers. Tea cheers. <laughs> there you go. Day three. Trying to uh, make sure our voices don't go away. Oh, yeah. I've been doing that by getting lots of sleep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You're one of the few, I feel like. <laughs> Not last night, but the other night. I actually got eight hours the other day. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Okay. I didn't uh, set my alarm, mm -hmm. so I just naturally slept seven hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> well, it's really great to have you on. Um, the mm. When was the last time? Did I have you on after I took on the weekly yet? I don't think so. Okay. Well, welcome back. Oh, thank you. Really happy thank to, you. Really happy to make the first happen once again. Yeah. Great. All right. So we're going to get right into it as I'm trying to make the podcast a little bit more focused in terms of its topics. Um, I'm going to have a segment a little bit later actually talking about my favorite thing at MWC. We're also going to have Jaime and Adam a little bit later. But for this one, super special, special guest, of course. The floor is yours. I debated a lot what topic I should bring up, and I don't think that you can get around the Mate X, mm -hmm. the Huawei Mate X, as the big kind of topic of the show. It was released here, unlike Samsung's Galaxy Fold, which was a few days before. Yeah, and still behind glass. And still behind glass, <laughs> and still, you know. So actually, that, that's one of the things that I've been asking people. Do you think that we as media love the phone more? because we've been able to touch it and have access to it. I, I think so, but I don't want to put it past Huawei, the, the level of engineering that they've managed to put into that to prove to consumers and to, for now, us, mm -hmm. that that kind of form factor is absolutely possible and can actually be great. And, I mean, I'm of two minds, hmm. right? I do believe that the Mate X might be technically superior to the fold, like just like the way that, that it's one display makes it a little more elegant, uh, the way that there, there's the cameras down the side, the way that just, it just f is quite future when you fold it out. Oh, yeah. But I think that technically the, the fold might be a better device because it shields the display, because the display is on the inside, right? Because it's outside versus inside. Yeah. Right? And yeah, Samsung's construction isn't as elegant, right, with three displays. Was it three displays? Two displays. Two displays, right? The one on the inside and the one on the outside, the 4.8, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So we have, like, it's not as elegant. I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. But, like, I think that it might be the more durable construction, mm -hmm. considering that we have plastic display now. It's going to be scratchable. Yeah, it's not going to shatter. But I remember the last plastic display phone I reviewed, and I actually used it for I think like eight, six, eight, six, eight months. Sure. And there's like pixel bleeding. There's dead pixels. Like the display just doesn't 
stack up. Did you see the, um, there, there can be a crease of sorts oh, yes. in the middle? Yes. Um, I'm sure that's just going to be par for the course, but is that going to be a deal breaker considering this is the form factor they've gone with? I think that that crease in the middle is exactly where we're going to see those dead pixels and the pixel bleeding and all that's of those true. errors, right? So I, th I, th I think that the physical construction right now, like we're going to see problems. It, would you would you believe, um, not believe rather, um, let me rephrase that, um, if you were to have this phone as a daily driver, mm -hmm. do you think that it would make you coddle it? Do you think that it would make you change how, let's say, rough you might be with your tech? Because I know a lot of us in this industry, we just toss everything around so much. This is not one of those phones that feels like it should be. Uh, so when Xiaomi came out with that first ceramic phone, Yes. I didn't bring it out of the studio. I was like, oh, this it was sliding all over the place. And I knew. I was like, I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it so I didn't bring it out. Right? Like, it would definitely make me change my habits. Like, mostly because I remember there was one point in my career where I was like, so I shouldn't carry a metal nail file in my purse. That's, that's pretty hard Dang. on the tech. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, I'm less careful than most people yeah. with, with their technology. So... I would be terrified. I just can't imagine. Uh, we all know those people who do that. They just throw their mm -hmm. phones in their bag. And then, of course, we, I've, I don't remember who actually did that test, but they put a phone into a backpack and just went like that a bunch. And, yeah, of course, like if the phone comes out looking okay, then cool. But this is literally all screen. <laughs> screen. It's all screen. And I, like, I'm just very afraid of the, like, they gave it a case because they know about this issue, yes. right? But at the same time, like, though it's a first generation, right, and it's a little bit between Samsung and Huawei, the foldable phone proves which company is more innovative, right? Mm -hmm. Like kind of this moment of like eye-catching the consumer to be like, look at the innovation in this company, mm -hmm. right? And right now I think Huawei definitely won that race, right? By having yeah. the phone that um, just technically seems like thinner and doesn't have a space in between and though i think both phones have a crease right That's I, true. I i heard that the the galaxy fold did have a noticeable crease when it was folded over even though there was a gap because i kind of assumed the gap might kind of keep that crease from happening but i guess not big enough i mean i'm a surface book user i don't mind the gap yeah <laughs> It, it won't. It definitely won't be the kind of gap that we saw on the Axon M, yeah. thankfully. Um, but that was literally a dual screen device. It's a kind of a different thing. Yeah. Um, so, the term practicality then is is, is practical a, a word to use for this Find X or oh, Find X? What's wrong with me? The Mate X. <laughs> Mate X. I mean, I think that for a first generation device, it's one of those just like let's catch the future. Let's like figure out this form factor. Let's discover. I mean, it, it doesn't matter so much how practical it is. Gen 1, right, is yeah. is about working out those bugs. It's for early tech adopters and Beyonce. Like, those, like, uh, you know, big influencers that are going to be like, look at me in my fancy phone. That's true. Phone, who, right? who would be, besides Gal Gadot, because she's already signed by Huawei, um, who would be the celebrity that that they tap in order to do this kind of phone i think that'd be pretty interesting but not even that uh not even just that you know just the, the impracticality of a phone like this that could if you get one scratch <sighs> any ocd is you're, you're gonna die you're, you're gonna, gonna die. die looking at this thing um, and that's why I'm, I'm tending to be like well you know samsung though everyone's kind of knocking on them for being less innovative they're not coming to the table blah 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 yeah. right the, the the thing is though they're less exciting their execution is stronger, mm -hmm. right? Like I, I've been always been drawn a little bit more towards the Galaxy line over the Mate line, even though the camera might be a little bit better. Is that right? Yeah, the, the camera might be a little bit better. It's even just though you were such are... a proponent of EMUI? Oh, I was such a fangirl of Huawei. Something changed, right? Like just like um, I, f I, f I kind of like maybe it was like the attitude, the the advertising of the company just kind of started curdling against oh. me this influencer thing how they were working with influencers that were just like there's four four cameras on the back right and i'm just like you gave that person a phone for like three days and they never noticed there was only three cameras on the back <laughs> like so like it just like like maybe from a tech perspective a tech journalist perspective sure i started to disrespect them a little or respect them just a little bit less yeah. um but you're, like, you're a little bit incredulous. Yeah. Yeah, you're a little bit incredulous about yeah. it. But that's the thing. Like, Huawei has grown. We remember Huawei, mm -hmm. like, from the P9, yeah. P8 oh, yeah. days. Yeah, P8 days. Yeah. Yeah, and I loved. 
I, I loved so hard mm -hmm. on, on, on this phone, but just somehow it feels like Samsung has come out with a more business focused device and I'm more business, right? It's true. Like w I run my business from my phone. I travel a lot. I do, I can, I love taking great photos, but like, even though I'm a tech reviewer and mm -hmm. want the best, the 5% difference on the camera is like not enough to have me like make uh, make other decisions. That's right? very fair. I, I think so. So like I, I I have gone a little bit more mainstream with my tech selection that I am willing to make sacrifices. Like I'm using a a one plus McLaren, like sixteen McLaren. The McLaren, yeah. Right. This this definitely does not have the best low light camera mm -hmm. out there. It's not not great. Right? But yeah, so and then that's the reason why I keep coming back to that term because mm -hmm. you bring up the uh, OnePlus 6T. My battery is about to die over there. Oh. Um, it's okay. I'll change it if I need to. Um, you mentioned the OnePlus 6T. As far as practicality goes, I think that that software is probably the best yeah. representation of that term. Yeah. So um, I agree. E even then, you know, EMUI, I remember you were singing its praises. Who knows how it's going to react to this kind of form factor, the way that's going to change things up. I'm sure Huawei have done their homework. Yeah. But the continuity of the... Uh, Galaxy Fold. Yeah. I actually enjoyed that a lot. Me too. So. Me too. And the fact that Samsung had, like, I, th I think that their execution on the foldable form factor might be a little bit stronger than Huawei's. Like, mm -hmm. I think that, like, from, like, a technical perspective on things really just working, um, like, Samsung, I think, is above Huawei in that kind of, that kind of realm. Like, there's definitely nothing wrong with the Mate 20. It's a f it's one of the best, it's maybe arguably the best phone on, on the market, right? Like, the camera's great, the UI is fine, yeah. like the battery life is baller. Like, there's, like, so many things to really like about it. But I think that, you know, from a use case scenario, Samsung has, like, from their feature creep in the past, mm -hmm. they've figured out how to make things a little more useful within their operating system. Indeed, indeed. I called the, uh, Mate, uh, the Mate X the uh, wallpaper TV of phones. Because it is literally all display. All of the processing happens in that big bar on the side. How did you feel about that that form factor on there? Because they made a big. Did they make a big deal about it? Um, you can hold, hold it in hold one in. hand. You can hold it's it in a one bit hand. of a hook, like a grip. Yeah. There's. I. Th I think it's totally fine. Like okay. this, like grip thing. Like hold it out. You get knocked on the subway. I mean, I would be terrified to take that thing on the subway. Someone would rob me. I was about to say. Yeah. I, I still am so <laughs> wary of having any of these new devices like anywhere right now because yeah. it's it immediately paints you as a target. In Barcelona, which is a oh, town wow. of, um, of whole, lots of robbery, yeah. uh, I was using <laughs> the S10 and someone was just like, did you buy that? And I was like, no. Where'd you get it? And I was like, from Samsung. And they're like, how do you like it? Show me the fingerprint. Show me, no, no, no. And I was like, okay, guy. Yeah, okay. Uh, step away right Step now. away from the phone. Right? <laughs> I have a feeling the, the camera's going to die uh, during this next question, but if it does, let's just keep talking then while I swap the battery. I'm like waiting for it. Like the, yeah, the indicator's it's going. Yeah, going, going. Um, one more time, going mm -hmm. back to the practicality term. Price. Everyone, every, everyone it had does a- does not matter. Really? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I mean, I was initially really shocked. It's not affordable, not affordable. But you know what? They could make it $5,000, they would still sell out. <sighs> is, is, is that a luxury <laughs> afforded to the Galaxy Fold, do you think? At 1980, is it 1980, 1900, something 1900. like that? 1900, I mean, I think Huawei will drop the price. Right now it's like, it's like 2300, like let's like, we're gonna set ourselves as a luxury brand, we're more expensive than Samsung, we have more tech, it's oh like, blah, 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 yeah. right? So like they will drop the price. Mm -hmm. I think just initially they're like painting a picture of their you know dominance and their luxury, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right, I think the price will come down to compete with the Fold, right? And then I think that we're gonna see they could just not. They could not lower the price, and I think they're 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 still going to sell out. Technology enthusiasts will buy it, right? We will buy it, and early adopters will buy it. Yeah. And we're it, conditioned as Google people to be early testers. Well, and I think like how many average people have said to me, "I'm going to get that phone anyways. I'll I'll sell it after." Or yeah, like yeah, you that's know, true. like even just to have it, a lot of people will do it. I mean, I think that the price, like if you think about. Uh, there's a few luxury car makers that are out there, right? And you talk to them about them selling cars and they sell their cars for $80,000. And actually one of them told me, I could have put my car out for $110,000. And that first initial wave of people who would buy it, they, they would pay $50,000 mm. more actually. That first set of people, the price could be almost anything. Yeah. And they're gonna do it anyways. So right. Huawei has sort of hit that upper echelon, you feel? I think, and, and I, I honestly think that it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not going to affect sales. Like Everyone's like, oh, I'm whingy. I'm not going to buy it. It's too expensive for me. Sure, 
Yeah. But the people who will chunk down, who will pay for it, will do it at 2000 or 3000 right? Yeah, <laughs> I do think that you're right. It makes me a tiny bit sad, but yeah. I do think you're right. Oh, there yeah. goes the camera. I'm going to go ahead and change that up. While I pivot a little bit, I actually okay. want to pivot this topic a little. It's still related. Okay. Um, I made a comment a little while back to, I want to say it was to Issa, okay. that phones are starting to get really exciting, but she and I had a conversation over... Um, LG's Air Motion mm -hmm. and their uh, new biometric features with mm -hmm. the time of flight camera on the front. Mm -hmm. um, she asked me why, and I, I swear this is still related to foldables. Um, uh, she asked me why people are so mad at LG, quote unquote, for having these features that they that seem so impractical or they that seem so off base, mm -hmm. and why why people are making such a big deal about it. And what I told her was. Consumers generally want to have more. Mm -hmm. That's what they're used to. Mm -hmm. More power, more audio, more spec. And in this case, what people are excited about is basically just more screen. Right. And that's really all these foldables are. Um, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying here is like, what are your general thoughts about foldables as a, as a category? Is, is, am, I, am I off base by, by thinking that way? No, I mean, so for me, I've, I've actually swayed a lot on the last few days. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not, like, first I was like, no, this is probably going to be another Google Glass. And then I was like, oh, actually, you know what? I think in the next 10 years, everyone we know will have, have one. Either we'll have one or someone that we know will have one. Right? I think 10 is a safe number, yes. Yeah, I think 10 is like a very conservative safe number. Yeah. Right? Like, I think over the next few years, we're going to try to figure out how this foldable form factor works best, mm -hmm. right? And in that iter iterative time, right, we're going to see a lot of mistakes. We're going to see a lot of stuff. And I think the price is going to need to come down, mm -hmm. right, for someone other than that crazy segment to buy mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, but I do, I do think that it, it is practical, right? Mm -hmm. like okay. I think, I, th I think it's practical if you want to try to, envision the future of 5G in the way that 5G can really be exciting, right? Like if we take, if we remove a lot of the processing power from the device and 5G just enables this really big base of like data and interaction and like we're able to use that screen real estate to interact with an actual powerful back end, right? You know, real computers link, like linked to this dumb device, which is where we're ultimately headed yeah. with, with 5G. So having this, you know, folding out display that suddenly we have a lot more productivity space, I think absolutely that. But in the meantime, them telling me that I can stream Netflix better mm, <laughs> or like, you know, like just a lot of their use cases I think are too early and not useful enough for the consumer. Yeah. But we are in Gen 1, right? So it's, it's, it's exciting. It's really exciting. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. The, the, the fact that we're in Generation 1 and they're already this... This good. They're, they're, they're good, yeah. They're this good. They're, it's kind of surprising yeah. how well they were able to execute so far. Yeah. Um, Think of like Gen 1 of smartphones as we oh, remember them. It gosh. was such a different world. Such a different world. <laughs> I mean, like the first iPhone didn't even have 3G. Yeah, that's very true. Right? Like, you, you, like if you just think about it, like, and then when, when we had the first, like, convertibles, right? We didn't know which hinge was going to be the most successful mm -hmm. form factor for the hinges for us to go into tablet form. And then the, the dominant hinge ended up becoming up the, the, the yoga hinge, basically, mm -hmm. right? Like Surface does have a like a mechanical mechanism, but they're in the minority, right? And I think that now with the foldable form factor, we're going to start to explore that. Is the display on the inside? Is the display on the outside? Mm -hmm. Like, how or how will this physical device be set up in order for us to get the most out of it? Yeah. Right. And I think Samsung does present the most interesting case between the two manufacturers with their triple app capability yeah, right I agree. and like the, the app continuity right mm -hmm. like and this is why i think the, that people can't discount the fold because i think samsung has really thought through mm. this kind of like let's make this the as product like productivity based as useful like let's not just focus in on like being able to stream more video right or take better selfies or like, play more games or play more games which, is, which like, is kind of where i came up came with that like i have a i have a thought with the fold and honestly with the mate x that, you know, 
open up open up the game and then unfold and all of a sudden you have like yeah. as long as mobile gaming finally gets to like console level yeah. i think it could be fantastic and like 5g will enable that yeah right like 5g will enable you to have like true console gaming on a dumb device mm -hmm. right so i mean like we're definitely getting there it's just right now i think like mm, we have to forgive it a little bit. It's Gen 1. Like, like think about it, the first Google Glass, right? Yep. Or, like, we could actually be in a Google Glass scenario, right? That this foldable form factor actually is it the next... It just doesn't take off. It just doesn't take off. Yeah. Right? But the it thing is, cool. if the buzz is anything to be... Uh, if, if yeah. we're to believe the buzz, people are really buzzing about it. Yeah. Google Glass was a very, like, insulated like reaction. I didn't feel like the general yeah. person was really like, oh, am I really going to have that on my face? <laughs> but when it comes to the foldables and you see the Mate X, that's always going to be a crowd-pleasing demo. You know, it was so funny. Right after the Samsung launch, I went for lunch with a friend. Mm -hmm. So I have to ask you about that phone. And I, I thought, I thought S10. <laughs> because like this is the one that, you know, is for sale and people can buy and yeah. blah, 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 blah. And then like f four words later, I was like, oh, right, right. The phone that no one's going to buy. Yeah. Right. And the, f the, the but but the phone that everyone's talking about. Yeah. Right. And and it took me a minute to readjust to the fact that it's not just tech enthusiasts and early adopters mm -hmm. that are going to be jazzed about this phone. Yeah. Right? I was it in the cab everyone. on the way to the event, and the guy that was driving was like, "Oh, Samsung," mm. because he saw that yeah. the the signs were up. Samsung. What are they announcing now? And I'm like, "Well, mm. I mean, their their next S phone, but they might have a phone that folds." And he like turned around and he was like, "It folds." <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. And imagine what that cab driver would have said if he saw the Mate X. Um, but I, yeah, I think I th obviously it's a worthy. I know you were saying before the cast, it's probably a cliche answer, but you know what? It's it's still a worthy answer. And yeah. I think I think that it is going to be on the minds of people for a while post MWC for yeah. sure. And that thing's going to be what April? Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be April. So it's yeah, going to be yeah, coming yeah. Uh, fairly soon. So uh, hopefully we're going to be able to take a look at it and use it in the real world scenarios and whatnot. Um, okay, so we're going to move to our next segment where we're going to have uh, a couple more people on. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm going to give you the all important, all, um, what's the term I'm looking for? I'm going to give you the really advantageous section, the middle of the podcast for your Ooh. own ad, your own mid-roll. Oh. So whatever you got going on, to go ahead and tell them. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I have mobilegeeks.com. I talk about the future of mobility. So also like future form factors of smartphones, but also ride sharing, smart city. Like I'm really looking at like the future of work and like the holistic way that how we exist as people is fundamentally changing. 5G is one of those components, new form factors like this is one of those. Yeah. So if you follow me at Nicole underscore Scooter, you can check that out. Get into the show notes, get, get into the description. Yeah. Maybe Jules will put it like right here. Oh, Jules, yeah. Jules will do that, right Jules? <laughs> yeah, there you go. I love anybody watching the video version, yes, this is my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. God, that, I love this thing. So I, it's so satisfying. Yeah. All right. Which part? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mic's up. Mic's up. All Hello. Right. <laughs> and we're back. Okay. So uh, we we have some of our representatives of the company here. We have, of course, Jaime here from Pocket Now. Been doing the daily very vigilantly here during MWC. It's been crazy. <laughs> uh, I love. I still love. No one's commented on me at the beginning of that one where I said, "Five G, baby." I haven't seen the. You haven't seen it. Yeah, haven't seen it? Yet, no. I'm Jaime Rivera. We're currently here at the Qualcomm booth. There is a toast to five G. Just fucking out daily. It's five G, baby. It's five G. I, I I got into it early. There were only like ten thousand views on it, but I was kind of disappointed. Nobody commented on me saying five G, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what they've come to expect from me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when I when I'm in my video, I'm very like it's me. You know, I'm very I'm very zen. Actually, we'll talk about it in a second. But I uh, I'm very zen. However, when I'm on other zen people's five. <laughs> however, oh. when I'm on somebody else's video, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> And then we have, you can introduce yourself, by the way, Andy. I'm Adam <laughs> Andy. No, I'm Adam Conway from uh, XDA Developers. But uh, yeah, Josh here seems to think my name is Andy. So <laughs> I blanked one time on your... On I know your... you think I'm Andy forever. Yeah. Also, remember to float that, that mic near you. Oh, but, yeah. Sorry. Batman forever? Huh? Batman forever? Batman forever, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So um, I had a really great talk with Nicole Scott, Mobile yeah. Geeks. Thank you again, Nicole. Sad um, that I wasn't there. Well, you were kind of busy. I love conversations with Nicole Scott. <laughs> <laughs> but you also love 
beautiful helicopter rides, don't you? Are you jealous? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, here's the thing. I'm only harping on it because you did too. Because you wanted me on it too. Yeah. And I, and I, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to make it, and I appreciate you trying. So, I, so in the spirit of solidarity, I am also annoyed. <laughs> uh, but it's fine. It looked like a really great time, but I had a lot of really good stuff today, not, not the least of which was talking to Nicole for the podcast. So, you know, it's been a productive day for me. Yeah. Um, and I was able to talk to uh, Functionality. Um, and this, this is not part of our topic. I am taking a couple of minutes to just sort of check in a little bit. Um, but had a little bit of time with Functionality and... Um, I love that name, by the way. Yeah. And I love the fact that they use the FX. I, I was like, the motion that I saw, the moment that I saw, I'm like, function what? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, are we factoring? Yeah. <laughs> Equations or what? <laughs> Welcome to our company. Math long, class. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to our company. Long division. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I just blanked out on the point that I wanted to make, uh, something that we were saying earlier. Um, Shoot, I'm trying to remember. Oh, uh, they have actually seen a lot of my videos, not just yeah. on Pocket Now or previous uh, pre- previous videos from Android Authority, but also uh, my videos on JV. And they were like, you're so zen. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you should see the Pocket Now video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an obnoxious dude on that one because we had champagne flutes. <laughs> it was awesome. Nice. It was very nice. Yeah, it was nice. Oh man! And also, it, you, I wish people could see just the kind of work you put into the daily because it's like it's clockwork. You have such a great flow on that. You thing. have to. The problem is because I have to send the files to Sam and to Diego. You like the longer the file, the longer the more mistakes I make. The longer the file, the more time it'll take for the file to get to them. Yeah, and I'm also. It's also really fun to see how you talk to Diego through the camera. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we have long. I have long monologue conversations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, one thing I wanted to do for like at least a minute is have you check in a little bit. We're going to get into our focus topic, which is our one favorite thing from MWC. And I mean thing. I don't want to go too far into too many things. Okay. But just a general, you're, this is your first MWC. Yeah. First conference of any of this scale. Really. Yeah, it's exactly. Overwhelming, but in a good way. Welcome to <laughs> yeah. the jungle. Yeah. yeah. We've got fun and games. Any We've sort got of... everything you want. <laughs> yeah, we know the names. Every, uh, <laughs> every, uh, any uh, general thoughts of MWC you want to share? Um, it's like kind of organized chaos. It's you can kind of like. Oh, wait till you see CES. It's <laughs> <laughs> very true. That's disorganized chaos. But it's also, <laughs> but it's also because I mean it's Vegas. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's. I, I'm really enjoying it. There's lots of cool technology. It's like you go around, the stuff that you didn't even think of would exist, like the ZTE the robots to play music. That thing is really cool. Have you seen that? Okay, so I walked by it while it was happening, and I just remember thinking to myself, it's not even that good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a very, very simple melodic Oh, yeah, yeah, song. of course, yeah, but it's, it's, it's cool. And there's that, just that one, I'm trying to remember which one it was. It's just that one robot that hits the one drum. It doesn't yeah, even do anything yeah, special. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> just like that in a beat. I didn't go to that dude I haven't really had time to like walk around walk around but there's just to let you feel better um, when we walked around we've only been in hall 3 yeah <laughs> we haven't done anything yeah, yeah so I've been only... in a bit of hall 1 and then mostly hall 3 but yeah. hall 1 is where everything is like the hottest stuff is there anyway of course yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes but there, I need to okay for the future I do want to Make sure I make it out to the things where, like, the 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 the, the Taiwan delegation are, True. where all of the ancillary products that are coming out of that part of the world are, and you know, because yeah. sometimes there's some exciting stuff there, and True. if you sleep on it, it's going to appear in another fashion sometime later, maybe on Kickstarter, and then you you don't realize that you saw the first one. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. I think this one's like Hall Seven. I think Hall Seven is the one where they have a lot of those. Um, in any case, um, okay. Nicole gave us a really great talk about the Mate X. That was her absolute favorite thing here at MWC. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did she did pepper in a little bit of talk about 5G because I think yeah. she's genuinely excited about it, if not because 5G itself is actually exciting, but also because she... I have a feeling she feels a little... Um, uh, she feels that journalistic vibe going right now because a lot of people in her eyes are talking about 5G in the wrong terms. Yeah. yeah. And she's happy to educate. Yeah. So kudos to Nicole for that. But with that in mind, Jaime, we'll start with you. Oh, my God. Your favorite thing. Two things. 
Okay, I'll give you two. Two things. You run this channel. Be nice. (laughs) (laughs) All right, two things. The first one, I have to give it to the Madex. Sure. I okay. uh, The video sadly not live yet. I'm working on it, Uh, but uh, I did not recommend it. I mocked it when they provided the price. You can watch my episode of the Daily two days ago, three days ago. I was like, what, $2,300, they're crazy, yada, yada, yada. And then I walk into the Huawei party, and they allow me to use it. Mm. Uh, and I was one of the few people that, that was allowed to use it because I have a really good – so I get along really well with certain of the people there. Mm. They're like, just hold it, do it. And I'm like, can I film myself doing it? And they're like, yes, you can. Ooh. Oh, my God. Okay, so the reason why I like the Mate X – is not because I believe in foldables. It's not that I don't believe it. It's just if they are going to deter the current experience of a smartphone, then we have a problem because I'm not willing to carry them in my pocket. Yeah. The thing about the Mate X is if you have ever held the Galaxy Note 9, you've held the Mate X. Oh. Elaborate. I'm, it I'm is, imagining it, it right It now. is literally that footprint a little thicker. And, and obviously a lot wider. No. It is literally that footprint. Oh, but what you mean is when it's folded. Yeah, when, okay. when it's folded. Okay, okay. And then when you extend it, it's like a Kindle Oasis, dude. Mm. Which I have not used, but I know it's thin. Well, and... I mean, Amazon charges a, a lot of money for it mm. over, the, you know, over the argument that it's so thin and light and whatever. Yeah. Yep. You know? And so for me, it's like I have not held – nobody's held a Galaxy – the Galaxy Fold. They haven't allowed anybody to touch it. True. And so I, I can't, I wish I could say it's the Galaxy Book, but, you know, the sorry, the Galaxy Fold, but they are not allowing anybody to touch it, so I can't. And it would have not been the Mate X if I did not have time with it. Mm. And I, there's a video. There, there's a video. By the time the podcast, go, podcast goes live, the video will already be live. Okay, that's good. Uh, so uh, I'm sure that there will be links to it, and it's just, I'm like, okay, fine. That for me was... Problem solved right there. Mm. If the foldable can feel like a smartphone, great. Yeah. That. And it feels like a tablet. Remember that last point he just made? Yeah. Yeah. For our, because we, Adam and I have already kind of yeah. planned out what we're going to talk about a little bit later. All right. But anyway, your second thing. Number two, um, I have kudos to Samsung. Okay. I was a little upset over our pre brief of the Galaxy S10 mm-hmm. and them having a 5G phone that we couldn't touch. And I'm like, MWC is going to be the show of everybody bringing prototypes that nobody can touch behind glass, and you get to see 5G. Samsung was the only company that showed not a prototype. Because if you see OnePlus, you see all the, all the other companies, they brought their 5G. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, even LG, LG brought their LG V50, but I wasn't, I wasn't part of the uh, – was it a working device at the event? As far as 5G goes? Um, no, 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 no. Did it work? It worked. Yeah, I've oh. been, I, I, I've been, I've been at the LG booth many times over okay. the last couple then, of days. Then, okay, it's then, there. then I'm gonna have to give kudos to both Samsung and LG. Okay, okay. Samsung great. and LG because they were able to bring f- usable 5G phones. Yes. I spent some time with the Galaxy S10 5G. It works. Mm-hmm. Like it works. There is a 5G tower in Hall Two. We oh. ran some real life tests. Go do the go do the check, and you can go yeah. see the you can go see the tower in Hall Two. It's there. Okay. I yeah. wish we could and, take and, and, these. And, 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 and I thought that it was like a mock up or anything. I yeah. actually I literally put the phone on airplane mode. I swapped it out. I I saw what it was connected to. It is a five G connection. Okay, okay, that's cool. I okay. wish we could take these phones from each of the booths in Hall Three and take it to that tower. Yeah, yeah. And Dude, but like, here's the thing. Think about it. It's, it's not even close to Hall Two. Mm-hmm. Hall Two is in the other. Yeah, it's in the other end. Yeah. yeah. So honestly, I have to say it, man. I have to give kudos to them for bringing products that work. Mm-hmm. That like you know, it's we've been hearing about five G for so long. But to actually see products that that use it, obviously, yeah. right now you can't tell the difference between five G and LTE. There's so much more to go, you know. Yeah, there is so much more to go. But they were showing me this working demo. Uh, in the case of Samsung, let's say you're watching an MLB game because there is so much data being streamed through five G. The demo is that if you're watching an MLB game on your phone you literally have access to all the cameras streamed in real time. So it's not just watching. Oh, I saw something about that. So it's yeah. not just you watching the the whatever stream with the producer deciding what you're watching. If you want to watch the whole game from the oh. pictures, 
perspective, you can. Yeah. And you can't just and wait a sec, wait for it. It's then it's not lo- just that you can see what the pitcher is doing. You can rotate the camera around him and choose the angle. Mm. Mm. That is pretty awesome. I was like, how crazy is that? But you and, know, it's it's funny. You mentioned baseball. That's a really great. That's a really great uh, uh, example. Obviously, because of where we are, it's going to be on the soccer pitch. It's going to be a football game. Think that, about gonna, it. That's going to be the first major one. Imagine World Cup in five G. No, dude. The, the, I, okay, so again, you we've been hearing the topic of 5G for the longest time. Yeah. Here, if you have not gone to the Samsung booth, do so. Mm. Spend some time with it. It is crazy cool. Crazy cool. We 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 shouldn't we shouldn't keep um, certain players out of the discussion. I mean, like earlier when I was talking to Nicole, we never touched upon TCL Dragon Hinge. So yeah. I just want to be sure that I say that out loud, just those words. But also, uh, as far as 5G is concerned, Xiaomi even has their Mi Mix 3 and 5G oh, yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. So kudos to them as well because it's at the booth. Does it work? I give you, you the, 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 like yeah you can okay kudos to me stuff. kudos yeah. to show me too so here's the thing the, the reason why I God that press conference from show me was insane dude <laughs> you could not walk yeah you like I know that they had the phone and everything I just I couldn't see it mm. yeah I couldn't see it and then you were at the LG event I wasn't able to be there on time yeah the LG event where yeah the V50 there are units floating around at the booth i've mm-hmm. been actually using one a video will be coming hopefully by the time this uh, podcast comes out but yeah the v50 i mean it's triple camera dual that, on the front uh v50 no tof on the front so no ha- no air motion no hand id thank god, thank god. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um, um, i'm sorry i'm sorry lg guys you know i've been a fan of your work for years but not this all right cool thing is you can switch it off i mean it's it's optional sure it's optional. Still is good for portrait mode photos. Still is good for face unlock. Yeah. It's just not. You can turn off the hand ID if you want. You can turn off the... You you will turn off the hand ID. <laughs> you will not be caught in the subway in New York City doing this to your phone. You mean you've you, never wanted no, to do that? What are you talking about? You realize New Yorkers are going to be like, oh my... They're going to throw like a dollar at you. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> How'd you do that? Poor man. <laughs> Poor man. Well, okay... That that as a as a <laughs> all right, no, as no, a no, hilarious right. segue. Let, to, uh, no, let, let me interrupt you. Okay, I'm really curious about that adaptable display for the V50. Yes, which is which is part of why Adam and I actually we agreed that our favorite thing because we know yeah. the Mate X takes takes the cake. It takes everyone's. Even Nicole was saying, "Do I really want to talk about it on yet another podcast?" She was like on four. I don't like the today. crease on the Mate yeah. X going down the middle. You can oh, see. Oh, she the was screen. at Miriam's too. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was <laughs> at Miriam's as well. So she, um, she d- d- gracefully came onto this podcast after she went on Miriam's already. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was like, do I want to talk about the Mate X again? Because it's, it's, it's kind of a cliche at this point. And I'm like, the thing is, cliches are cliches for a reason. Mm. Like, there's a reason why the Mate X takes up so much of the consciousness. It, it deserves to. There's no denying that. However, yeah. with that in mind, when we talked a little bit, we were like, you know, I really love what I see over at LG. I just yeah. do. Like, say what you will about the hand ID and the air and the air motion. Like, at least they're trying with something that is not just more screen, something that's not just more performance, more gaming, more, 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 more. Something that's literally different. There's one you know thing I, mean? I really appreciate with the uh, the TOF sensor mm-hmm. is they haven't gone and given it like a gimmicky name or anything. They've just called it the Z camera. I like that because it's for the Z axis like. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I uh, like yeah, that was that. a good name. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good name. And I get it. Like no one's actually going to use it. But then no. when I when I when I thought about it harder, I was like, this is a proof of concept for LG. Where does LG's main revenue come from? It's not phones. It's no. everything else. Everything yeah. else. So this is the proof of concept of the TOF camera being on the front of a display because I bet you you're not gonna if the the scenario that I would create for myself to make sure I actually use a TOF camera is to put it on a stand next to my next to my keyboard and then when i want to like do something i'll just put my hand up and just do stuff that's yeah. actually not a bad idea yeah to put it up on a on a phone stand Wait a, yeah well our biggest complaint with wireless chargers is you can't use your phone yeah unless you can i mean yeah i mean if no, it's, no, no. Yeah, unless, exactly. you, unless you have a uh, unless you have a g8 exactly the thing about it is i okay so my problem is not the air gestures mm. it's the gesture <laughs> it's having to do this. It's like, yeah. what am I, Predator? <laughs> 
Like seriously? Well, <laughs> as I was saying, it is proof. It's like looking through my eyes. <laughs> Dance puppet. <laughs> Dance puppet. Guys, I'm like, come on. And, and I get it that there are probably limitations and it requires that to be able to be captured. Fine, I could I could understand all these things, but you have to under you also have to understand that the less natural the gesture is, the, the more lab, it yeah, becomes yeah. a gimmick. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. And again, agreed. Totally get it for the phone. I'm just sort of thinking more long term because it's clearly not something that LG ever expects everybody in the future of the G line to actually use. Or else they're and, deluded. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. Um. What this gesture is is a proof of concept for their TVs. There's going to be a camera at the top of a TV one day. And when you're sitting on your couch and you want to, you need a controller, you put your hand up and you actually change things. Yeah. As long as the TOF camera is far reaching. I was about to say, well, with the limitation, well, obviously everything gets better over time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so fine. That's actually not a bad idea. It's just, again, Connect has existed forever. Yeah. There have been so many services that have motion recognition. How many Xbox? Oh, I'm sorry. I know you don't play with that. So I apologize. <laughs> I'm a PlayStation guy. Yeah. What's sorry. up, no, 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 no. What's up? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but, but neither. I'm PlayStation as well. There you go. But um, let me ask you this. How many Xbox are being shipped right now with Connect? None. Exactly. Yeah. Why? Well, you were, okay, this, here's the thing. And I know where you're going with this. You already have a controller. You already have all of the means that you need. You don't need an extra thing in order to actually enjoy your Xbox. Well, and, and it's not just that. These are most motion, motion gestures are things that are not, like you see Minority Report. It looks cool. Mm -hmm. You have to understand how many takes Tom Cruise must have done to stand in front of that panel and start moving things around. And then it's like me vlogging with this camera and just lifting it up and it's heavy. Yeah. And then over time you get tired and you want to put it down. And so how often do you think that humans really want to be doing this in yeah. the air? Nobody does. Mm -hmm. Nobody does. You know, I have to. People may argue with Apple as much as they want when it comes to touchscreen functionality on laptops. But tell me, how many times do you touch the screen on your laptop? I don't, you know, but we know people who do. Yes, that's one fraction of how much in a potential consumer market. Well, then I will be the one fraction who does this. So, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, again, let's go back to the fact that I still consider it to be a, a, a step in. It's nice. It's fine. Yeah. You I just know. I just I just look at it and I think we've been we've been in the last few years of trying to make things thinner and thinner and thinner and smaller and sleeker and look what we can fit and blah 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 but this show has been finally of 180 on that. We are literally not caring anymore. <laughs> and it's nice to see that instead of more, 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 which is what we're getting, more screen, a bigger phone, a bigger battery, that freaking Energizer phone, for God's sake. <laughs> you go see it? The brick. Oh, we're planning on going tomorrow. Yeah, I, th I think we figured out where it is. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to find, apparently. Okay. Um, at least we have something that is literally like off of that pathway. Um, I don't want to take up too much of the, the LG talk. Adam, you wanted to say why you are into it. Yes. Well, okay. it, not it, but LG. Yeah. It. So the, <laughs> the main thing I really like about LG at the moment is the dual screen, I guess, addition module thing, whatever it, you'd call it, is actually pretty innovative. It works. It works well. I got time to actually play with it. And the yeah, biggest thing, LG tomorrow. Yeah. the biggest thing I liked about it actually was, no, it wasn't just the fact that it was a second uh uh, screen that you could use to play games or whatever. It was that it had function. good, ha yeah, it had function and it had good haptic feedback. It felt good, like that's obviously on the V50 itself rather than the dual screen. But it ties in so well with the second screen. I'm sure people have had a Nintendo DS at some point. Mm -hmm. It is the perfect, I guess, module if you want to do emulation, if you want to play games on your phone. I'm not a mobile gamer at all. I hate it. But I look. Why at am this. I always the only one who likes it? <laughs> <laughs> I look, I look wait, at wait this. a second, but that's actually a good idea. I would never do it on a display, but if you gave me a controller that will connect to those, to those pins, yeah, yeah, that's and it, true. And it looked like a clamshell. But you have to. But also, like, like you were saying, the haptic engine on the on on LG phones is actually really, really responsive. There's something I want to talk about that as well. It feels nearly directional. It's like you press the A key on the gamepad. It feels like it's vibrating there, but it's a really sharp vibrate, so it nearly feels like you're actually pressing a button. Oh, so it's like the V30. So ever since the V30, I don't, have you ever used an LG phone? Uh, no. 
So I don't know if their Taptic, if Apple's Taptic engine is made by LG. We don't know who the supplier is. Yeah. But ever since the V30, it's like if you have a Taptic engine, just literally go into the manual controls of any LG phone and just move the dial on whatever the function of the camera. And yeah. that, dude, it feels like if something is actually moving. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's what I liked about it because they had a, the analog stick. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. <laughs> All right, but okay. That was my phone. So, but here's the thing. I, I have to hand it to LG in one thing about that. See... I don't want a foldable all the time. Yeah, that that was what I was getting at. Um, I, I yeah. honestly, why would I want to pay two thousand three hundred dollars for a product that I will only turn into a tablet ever so often? Yeah, if, if I'm a busy guy and I'm always you know in the city and doing this and doing that, you know, it's I'm not going to be. I'm not. Yeah. it's just not going to happen. So if they gave me a module that's two hundred dollars. Oh, come on. All right, 250. Yeah. If they give me a module that's 350 where I can extend my screen by just snapping one thing whenever I want to. It could be something yeah. that's in my backpack and whenever I've got a long commute I just pull it out of my backpack, snap it on and boom, watch a movie. You know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So here yeah. here here's where here's where my perspective comes in having used this product for quite a while by now. Um and yeah, I've I, I have quite a bit of footage that that hands-on is going to be pretty awesome. Cool cool. Um there are a lot of use case scenarios for this that LG have actually baked in. Mm. For example, okay, first of all, you put it into the case, you close it, your phone's protected. It yeah. is a case, yeah. first and foremost. It's um, actually, yeah, like rubber corners and everything. Like exactly. That. When you open it up, and if you still want to have the case on it, but you don't want to take it out of the, but you don't want to take it out of it just to use your phone singularly, it'll fold onto itself. Yep. So you can still use your phone, just your phone. Interesting. Um, the screen will not turn on until you tell it to. So when you open the case, it knows that it's in the case, but it won't turn on the other screen until you hit a little button. Mm -hmm. So that way you have full control over it. Now, you can set up the dual screen to automatically open an application when you trigger for it to turn on. Here's the use case scenario. Being the guy who always does stuff as, uh, uh, who is this for? Productivity, first of all. You take it out. Imagine my, here's my notebook. Uh, and wallet. So when I take it out, I know that I'm looking at something. I'm going to start writing on the other side. That kind of thing. Yeah. Turn on. Uh, put put the put the V50 thing cue inside of the case. When you take it out and you open it and you hit that button to turn on the second screen automatically. Gmail. Now, question: Does it have a way to snap itself to remain in one position? But yes, there there's 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 this uh, like handheld where it's in a V pattern and then. Flat. Can you imagine a Galaxy Note 10 with that functionality? It would be great. Like stylus support and that. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because I would immediately. Because that was my first immediate thought. Was when I opened it up and Gmail just appears immediately on the side. That is perfect. I'm going through my emails and then if I need to do research on the other side, open up a full browser, a full secondary app. That's the thing. It's two full apps. It's not the software trying to cut a screen yeah. and trying to multitask in a multi-window. Oh, really? It's yeah. two full apps. It's actually rendering twice. Um, the other thing is, uh, the other function, and I don't think that anybody has actually tried it because there's no way of doing it. There's no apps for this. Um, if you take a screenshot on one, you can copy it immediately to the other. Okay. So if you're talking, if I'm on WhatsApp with you and you're like, where do we go? I open up maps. Mm -hmm. I take a screenshot of the map. It automatically goes to you. Interesting. Because mm. it understands that I'm messaging. That's smart. Right? Mm. That's what that I'm saying. That is smart. So there's a practicality to this. This is actually a pivot. It's useful. Yeah. yeah. It's so see, see, but uh, that's the thing. I love the idea. But, and how much is that thing going to cost is the question. Now, here we don't know how much it'll cost, but what we do know is it's not coming to the U.S. Really? What? Yeah. It is Sweet. not <laughs> coming to the U.S. So which is why I said. order it? Exactly, which is why I said in my video, what the, I'm doing a video um, for it also on JV. Um, everyone get into the comment sections. <laughs> we need this. Like, we need this. In the seas of We people, need you. <laughs> <laughs> we need more stuff like this. And I feel like LG is really one of the only companies that is actually trying to inject true practicality into its products. Yeah, but... Uh, we go back to you know how much 
how even LG seems like if they don't believe in their own products. Yeah. You know, yeah. With, well, yeah. you are the biggest proponent of the old VR glasses that they had. That so, is a practical okay, product. Okay, so here's the thing. I really – the people make, may make fun of the LG G5 all they want. Mm -hmm. I don't blame them. But for me, the LG G5 was probably one of my favorite phones. That, you know, that mod approach, mod, that modularity, sure, you have to remove the battery and everything. Mm -hmm. But it, it just it offered so much potential. It just needed more time. I feel that that phone in particular needed more time. Um, but it was, you know, like for me, that what, what would solve VR right now? Like it's what I told you. I hate the concept. I have an, op I have an Oculus Go. Mm -hmm. I tried it once. We'll never put it on again. Why? Because I didn't pay for it, one. <laughs> Two. <laughs> did you get one in your invite? I did. From I did, yes. Okay, and so... Here's the problem. It's the process of putting it on, the process of setting it up, the process of adjusting yourself, yeah. and then worst of all, that after you've done all that, your face is already tired because that thing is heavy. Yeah. It's and so too many processes. It's too many processes. It's like the HTC Vive. I loved it, but the process was so daunting just to set it up. Yeah. You know, every time you have to turn on the computer, then the Vive, then Steam, then the app, then a, it's like, damn it. Yeah. You know, I just want to put something on and have it work. Mm -hmm. And so LG has been the only company that showed us something like that with the G5. They had this mod that never came to the market where it was literally a pair of sunglasses with pretty much just like a little cover on the side of them to create that VR experience. And it had a USB-C cable that you would put, you could leave the phone in your pocket with the USB-C cable, yeah. and the phone would power the goggles. Yeah. And so I was... and you They got were, hot as hell, but yeah. It, but, <laughs> but, okay, but it was a prototype when we yeah, saw so it. Yeah, it never came to the market. Exactly, so exactly. exactly. but think about it. Down. Would you not use that? Definitely. That's cool. It, like, and, and people were like, yeah, but it's. I think it was only 720p. I'm like, it, the vibe is as well. It's yeah. like... Yeah. You and know, again, prototype. It, they could end up upping it, but when it goes to market, like that, that has so much potential. Can, can somebody come up with that product? Yeah. Like if yeah. LG abandoned it, can somebody do this? Because I feel that that is the secret to get VR off the ground. You yeah. literally snap, snap, and you start. Ease of use. Ease of use. And I don't care if it's not. Listen, come on, VR companies. None of your products are immersive. None of them are because the experience of using them, it's something cool and you'll invite a couple of friends and they'll play with it once, but then you'll forget that it exists. Yeah. Like when yeah. HTC reached out about the Vive and they were like, we're, we're running out of units. Any chance you can let me borrow your unit? I'm like, dude, take it. Just leave the computer, but take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, the fact that not enough uh, gaming YouTubers and Twitch streamers even touch VR anymore, really. Yeah. Unless it's like Beat Saber, but that's it. But that, but that's the thing. The reason why is ease of use. Yeah, and that's what LG's trying to do. And this dual screen case, that's like an example of ease of use. Yeah, yeah. It, you just snap it in. It mm -hmm. works. Yeah, and not to mention like there are the the core DNA of what LG is good at with these phones is still remains. It still remains. I've I've recorded some video using the G8 and the V50, um, 4K UHD at 52 megabits per second uh, in terms of how much uh, how much its bitrate is. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. half of the camera I'm using right now to record this podcast. Because you could do 4K at 100 megabits. That's a low setting, mm -hmm. but still, nothing comes close to that. Yeah, so the yeah, mega, the, that's the, a professional camera. Like. Exactly. The bit rate of the camera is actually really good. So as much as I do believe that the S10 Plus is going to be the easiest vlogger's camera out yeah. of a smartphone uh, coming up, the, the, v, the, the V50 or the G8 are still going to be top. They're still yeah. going to be up there. They're still going to be a great vlogging camera. Um, you know, LG just needs to work out some of the kinks. And like you said, it, it's a confidence thing. Yeah. LG needs more confidence. They need to. They need to just. Yeah, no. They need, they need oh, to wow. go. All, they need to go all in on it. So even an MP4, the GH5 is 100 megabits at 30p. Exactly. Does that matter if it's an MP4 or MP4 LPC, whatever. Yeah. It's always 100 megabits. That's that is that is yeah. the bare minimum for a camera meant to make great video. Yeah. Right there. And LG manages to hit halfway there. Yeah. Dude, but I, I'll tell you this much. I think, okay, I've been praising the iPhone 4S for a bit, mainly because I 10S, feel... 10S, you mean? This, the iPhone 10S, sorry about that. <laughs> I, I, this, is four, uh, I, uh, this is clear that I only slept four hours. <laughs> four hours, that's the number that's on my mind. I'm really tired, and I apologize if my demeanor shows that I'm tired. I'm not drunk. <laughs> Yet. Yet. But um, he was looking at me when he said that. <laughs> Apple has been the king of video since the iPhone 4. 
there has been no room for comparison. I don't care who you've watched on YouTube. I don't care who claims to be uh, an expert at this topic. Oh, fine. Okay. That's good. <laughs> listen, just kidding. listen just kidding. dude. I'm sorry, but it's it's just one of those things where, you know, honor where honor is due. Mm -hmm. That's just it. But today I use the Galaxy S10 Plus. It's up there. It's yeah. it's right. No, it's not just up there. It's there. Yeah. It's there. The improvement is there. And, the, and so I, I had a long conversation with Qualcomm about the 855. And I was like, dude, whatever codec you guys use, it, it's literally, it's like either over sharpened and OEMs can't really do much. Yeah. And, and they explained to me, no, wait for the 855, man. We are really going to hit that hard. Mm. Yeah. I was able to test it today. Dude, we were in a chopper that's dark inside, extremely bright, out, bright outside. And you, it was crazy how the phone would adapt, which yeah. is one of the things that I love about the iPhone. I, you know, I had the GH5 with my 12 millimeter f1.4. I did a lot of play with it, and I could not achieve the dynamic range that I did with the Galaxy S10 Plus. And which is one thing that I love about smartphones. They're smart about it, whereas yeah. regular cameras are not. You have to tweak them to be able yeah. to achieve it. And so, and this is without HDR video enabled. This is without HDR10 video enabled. I can't imagine if I filmed an HDR. Yeah, HDR10 uh, on the V50 is aggressive. Is it? It is aggressive. Oh, it's like on Sony's, dude. Like I, yeah. like I. It's funny when I I did my Xperia XZ3 vi review, and they're like, "Where's your HDR10 video sample?" And I'm like, "I couldn't get Final Cut to render it." Yeah. <laughs> That's a, that's the only problem with it is that you can do HDR10, you can do hi-fi audio recording. A few people out there might question why I, I I didn't use it in my upcoming LG videos for both yeah. you and myself. Yeah. Um, it's mainly because it makes the editing process an absolute chore. Um, I remember trying to use HEVC. Yeah. And it was horrible. I hate yeah. Apple for doing yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, but HEVC. Yeah. I, oh, I, I went yeah, to you're that. not using a Mac. That's exactly. True. Sorry about exactly. that. Exactly. Because because on that. a Mac it's like. Boom. Yeah, it's true. Um, and, you know, I'll make bones about it, but at the same time, I understand why it's the case. Uh, but, yeah, before we get too far, you know, off the beaten path, like, are there any other parts about the LG talk that you wanted to give before we call yeah. it? You just really love that dual screen. I really love that dual I'm screen. I'm going to go see just, that thing tomorrow, yeah, dude. You see, that's, a, that's the one thing I like. I was saying I'm not a mobile gamer, but if this is executed right and – developers kind of figure out how to integrate with it because i assume it'll be open to apps to use and access yeah if they're like dolphin emulator psp emulators ds emulators if any of them can access it and allow you to rebind keys to use it that in itself is a game changer for emulation on android in my opinion no, I, I i like the idea yeah th th it's got a lot of potential yeah. and then as well if this and works out the three people at this table are going to be some of the only people who can own it in the <laughs> because <laughs> no, we're going to make some phone calls <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> the, the pins as well on the back i think uh, they could be going Where for like a moto pins, mods by the way they're pogo pins the bottom third because i was so upset when we did oh, the where? briefing with the v50 yeah and they did not well yeah they had a they said so they allowed us to touch it but they were like no photo no video so i'm like what am i going to waste my time on this thing if i can't do anything with it yeah and then i i get a call from lgpr no an email from lgpr and they were like so apologetic we're sorry. We just learned that in the briefing in the UK, they did allow him to film and take uh, it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm not going to redo this video. Yeah. Like, it's going to go the way it's going. It's going to yeah. go, period. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, uh, our V50 coverage, um, respectively, mm -hmm. is just coming out a little bit later. But you're going to want to check it out. And you're going to want to tell LG that this product should come out in the US. 100%. Why is it not? It's the way Korea is. Like yeah. They, yeah, it's just the way Korea now, is. Now tell me something. It's also a carrier thing. Now tell me yeah. something. How do you feel about the fact that the V50 is a V40? <laughs> <laughs> There's still enough new about it. Internally, but like the V50 is literally. But you know what? For as much as we could say anything, I mean, Apple's 10s is a 10. It's yeah. a 10, yeah. It's exactly. a 10. But how do you feel about this? Because this is not common. This is not common in Android in, in Android phones. I, 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 I would say that this is the first. This is, this is one of the first to do that, but I, I honestly don't mind so much because what they've improved in it is significant. Mm -hmm. And it's also what it. they focused on more than re than going back to the drawing board on design. Yeah. 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 I, that's why I think. In, in my case, it's not. I'm not against it. I praise it, actually, because 
you know how many RF antennas you have to add for millimeter wave on 5G. Yeah. How were they able to do it in the same footprint? Because if you grab the Galaxy S10 uh, 5G, it's larger. Yeah, yeah. Mm, that's true. It is larger. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we did it, guys. I think right. it's very easy for us to talk about our favorite thing at MWCA. Once again, a big thanks to Nicole Scott for being on in our earlier segments. I forgot. <laughs> no, I for- no, no. I forgot one thing. Oh, what's up? Nokia 9. Oh, Nokia 9. Ooh, yeah. That's true. Nokia 9 Pure View. The thing is, I, I haven't even seen it here at MWC. I really? saw it in New York. I, you know, oh, that's I, right. I was briefed in New York, and so it hasn't been like in my radar because right. I had already seen it. We had a talk with them, and uh, the Nokia 9s are internal people's units. So there's no, there are no units. There for are us no to actually units. Yeah. That's yeah. why, yeah, a guy let me use it for like five minutes. It's kind of like a favor because he's like, oh, you're from XDA here. I like you guys. You yeah, play listen, with it. listen, but it's okay. Can I just say this to like my f- final opinion? I have never been in an MWC that's been so exciting. Agreed. Mm-hmm. All things considered, it's been a pretty great show. It's been a pretty great show. Yeah. I've really, really enjoyed I've it. I've really liked it. I miss an MWC like this. Yeah. I miss going to a trade show and being like, wow. Yeah. Wow. That. I, I have a lot of enthusiasm. The other day we were chatting with Brandon, and Brandon was like, oh, my God, dude, this year is going to be awesome. And he's right. Mm-hmm. He is right. There is a lot of experimentation back. And I love it. And yeah. the other, like, it's it's just, it's really hard when you ask me what's my favorite thing. It's a lot of things. It's honestly, it's like, the, it's the Nokia 9, it's the Mate X, it's 5G. It's also the fact that the Galaxy S10 costs less than an iPhone 10. Yeah. yeah. That's absolutely right. Um, I think a lot of people let that fly over their heads because they just see that 999 price point and they don't realize what that really means. It's yeah. the price of this Mi 9. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. It's like, yes, send me your review unit. Thank you. It's here. <laughs> it's here. Oh, my God. Dude, the price of this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, my God. Please don't ever send me a black review unit again. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. We're going to go ahead and call it on this one. Uh, we can talk about, uh, hopefully, those Nokias are, go- are going to come in sooner rather than later. Um, I'm not going to say anything that, you know, may or, I think release information finally came out like a day or two ago. Yeah. yeah. Or even today, probably. But I'm not going to talk about it on here. Oh, release dates, just the, at the time of this recording, I got I already have the email. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, we're oh, that is trickling in. Uh, we're excited to get those Nokias in. We're excited to get the Mate X. We're excited to get all the LG stuff as well. Even if, literally, if I'm the only person in America who has a dual screen, I'm going to be happy with that. Um, anyway. <laughs> no, you're not. Because you're going to give me one, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, we're going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go into the outro in general. But before I do that... Uh, let the people know where to find you, Adam. I did the same thing with Nicole earlier at the end of our segment. Mm. Um, I guess you can find me on Twitter, uh, at Adam Conway IE. Uh, you can also find me on XDA, of course, with various different articles, reviews, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's I need to go dust off my XDA user. Oh. Yeah. Really? Oh, my huh. gosh, yeah. I didn't I know you I had did. one. Oh, from very back in the day. I was about to say. Uh, same, right. same. Very back in the day, when XDA was not was not owned by... Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, 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 different ownership. Yeah, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. <laughs> and on that note, that is it for the weekly. Our theme music is "Bloom" by Minerva, courtesy of a royalty-free license with Argo Fox. You can learn more about it in this episode's description. You can follow our crew on Twitter. Jules, uh, Jules Wong, who has edited this podcast, is found at Point Jules. Jaime is, of course, at Jaime underscore Rivera, and Adam Conway is found on Twitter at Adam Conway I E. Nicole is found at Nicole underscore Scooter. Nicole Scott of Mobile Geeks, that is. And of course, I am JV Tech T. You know me. I am JV. I love tech and I love to drink me some tea. Pocket Now is at Pocket Now on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube in English and Espanol, where you can find more news on the Pocket Now Daily and Pocket Now Adario every weekday. Catch up with what the weekly is talking about at pocketnow.com slash podcast. We certainly want to know what you think about all of the products that we talked about on this show. And of course, since I had everybody talk about their one favorite thing from MWC. You can always let us know what you think is your favorite product of this particular show. Make sure
sure you make your voices heard not only by going into the comment sections, but also by emailing us, podcast at pocketnow.com. We'd certainly appreciate your feedback through reviews and ratings on Google, Apple, Spotify, Overcast, or wherever you happen to be streaming us, because without you, we wouldn't have been able to make this show for your eyes and ears for now seven years straight. All right, we're going to see you when we all finally get home from Barcelona, from Mobile World Congress, and we'll see you in our respective studios and homes next week.